We're saying so many of the other players have moved to this area, but very few right. uh, have actually grown up and, and uh, been playing as long as you have. And it is a real pleasure and a real honor to have you in the club, and even a greater pleasure to have you in the club tonight. And what I'm I'm really curious, Joey, about all these cool places that that you've played at, you know, uh, from the beginning of your career. You know, I mean, there's there's so many, so many juke joints and clubs that you play throughout Florida. But the first club I played to in Miami when I, when I got down there was a place called Cafe Society. Didn't hear about that one. Didn't hear about it. What about the Harlem Square? Yeah, Harlem Square. I've I heard. played both of those. Uh, the Night Beat, Sir John Hotel, Night Beat. Played that the Continental Club. Oh yes, yes. Okay. That, 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 yeah, that, All right. That so you was, played at some of the older uh, blues. Juke joints back then. Yeah. If you yeah. want to call them juke joints, they were more clubs. They, they were more clubs. Uh, you've heard of uh, the Cabbage Patch? Yes. Played there. Matter of fact, I, I went to see B.B. King there. That was a real old place, man. Mm -hmm. off, the, off the beaten path, wasn't it? Uh -huh. I'd go to this little juke joint it's called, uh, in my hometown called the Brown Derby. And um, and I would, I would, um, I would, um, they had a jukebox there, a big rock hole jukebox. Yeah. I used to sit there, and whenever I got me some money, got me a handful of quarters, and you'd get three plays for a quarter. Right, that's right, I remember that. And I'd get there, sit there, and play every blues record, most of them, by B.B. King. Right. Play every one of them, and sit right there and learn each one of those songs. Uh -huh. Note for note. Right I up. learned what everybody's playing. The horn right off the players, jukebox. The drum, right off the jukebox. Right. And uh, so I'm really curious to hear how how you got how you got started. You know, when I went to Miami. I played with uh, Frank Williams' band as a drummer. I, I went in the recording studio. Frank Williams' mm -hmm. um, his band, and I was playing with down in Miami. They hooked me up with a, a recording deal. Right, and I recorded my first record, which mm -hmm. was a national Chitlin Circuit hit. Right, record called "Somebody That Took My Baby and Gone," uh -huh. and that was my first step over into the the really um, professional. When was that? The '71. '71. Yeah. When did you cut your first record? That was. That was your first. That was it. That was it. Was it. Right. That was and now, did you start off in the blues, or were you playing something uh, I was playing, gospel? Or? I was playing rhythm. I started off in gospel, <clears throat> uh, but not as a professional gospel player. I was mm -hmm. just basically church mm -hmm. stuff and, and local gospel groups. And then I had a 
kind of get around if you wanted to play the blues or anything else other than church music. You wanted to do secular music when you had to get around your parents. Right. You, know, you, you couldn't. <laughs> you, you just couldn't come because you playing the devil's music. Now you can't. <laughs> you know, it harkens back to the, the old soul singers of the '60s. Yeah, that's true. Was there anybody who influenced you uh, in your singing style? Um, Lil Milton, more than anybody that I know of. Um, and then, of course, um, Johnny Taylor, Tyrone Davis, Bobby Blueblad. I, I had so many. I was like, <laughs> I was like a, a smoker's board. All the soul singers. <laughs> All the soul. Clarence Carter. I bit off more than I could chew. <laughs>
you know for for young musicians to, yeah. to, to go through that you know to uh -huh. to, to sneak into the clubs yeah and watch you know you know um you know other players that that are older that are already you know you know uh -huh. somewhat you know established time came around for me to to really play um uh, I, I, I was like keeping it a secret from my aunt mm -hmm. and she discovered it uh, that I could really play. Right. Uh, my first um, experience of uh, influence was this band called Gene Franklin and the House Rockers. You don't see they that in other genres. I haven't. I haven't seen rock players, bands, invite some young and up-and-coming player just out of the audience to come on up. Don't know the guy, don't know how well he can play, but yeah, come on up. Yeah. Happens all the time here. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie Eubanks and Rick Lawler and uh, uh, Justin Willis, and so many of the other players. Uh, Laurie said that is the rite of passage. I mean, that's right. how we pass right. it along. Right. This is a, uh, a younger Joey, and this was done by Earl Johnson in 1997. Uh, and it's been in the club ever since and uh, even signed by Joey. You've got your signature, your autograph down there somewhere. 
right over here, right over here. Dave and Elizabeth, mm -hmm. right. But it's been proudly hanging in here um, for a long time. Now, how does this this place here compare to some of the other places you play? In no, terms of its no, no comparison when it, when it comes to the <laughs> and, 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 and the hospitality and the things that you make happen for the bands. You, 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 nobody cares like you, Gary, you and your wife. Well, this is about the music. You, 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 but I know Gary. you've been coming here uh, for quite some time, and yeah. we've loved having you come in here. You always bring in a huge crowd. Thank you. Sitting down with us and Thank you, coming Gary. up here again. Love it.